The following program is produced and sponsored by you, the TBN Partners, and is only made possible through your generous support. From coast to coast and around the world, it's time to praise the Lord. The Lord covers the major Christian events in America and across the world from the heart of Europe. To the tip of Africa. From the centers of Asia. and South America. You're part of the world's largest prayer and praise gathering. Joining us from Trinity Music City in Hendersonville, Tennessee, are author and traveling minister, Mark Pinkins, senior pastor of Evangel World Prayer Center in Louisville, Kentucky, Dr. Bob Rogers, Pastor of Christ's Worship Center in Harvest, Alabama, Jamie Cooper. Singer, songwriter, and senior pastor of Calvary Temple in Kerrville, Texas, Del Way. Ready to take your calls. Prayer partners around America. you tonight to I call this America's most exciting prayer and praise gathering right here from the great country music capital of the world in Nashville Tennessee we're delighted that you're with us and what a program we have for you tonight we're going to talk to you tonight each one of our guests are going to spend at least a little of the time talking about the wonderful impact that their fathers had upon their lives we want to say happy Father's Day to all the fathers that are watching tonight. God bless you real, real good. This is going to be a very special night. We have men that pastor great successful churches across America. Bob Rogers from the great Louisville, Kentucky. And what a tremendous man of God that he is. Uh, Mark Hankins pastored for many years in Alexandria, Louisiana, and now is one of the great traveling ministries across the nation. Jamie Hooper also pastors in Harvest, Alabama, one of the most beautiful country churches you will ever visit in your entire lifetime. Last but not least is going to sing for us as nobody can, Pastor Dale Way from Kerrville, Texas, and what a powerful man of God in both ministry, in the word, and in song he truly is. We're delighted to have you with us tonight, so I hope and pray you'll just stay tuned because it's going to be a wonderful night. We truly believe that. Let's pray together right now. Heavenly Father, we ask tonight that the precious Holy Spirit will absolutely take charge of this meeting, that lives will be changed and transformed by the power of Almighty God. We lift our voice to you tonight, and we want to thank you, our holy God, the heavenly Father, the creator of heaven and earth, the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our holy God whom we serve, that gave his son Jesus Christ, that each and every one of us may have life and have it more abundantly. Now, Holy Spirit, we welcome you here tonight that you will take charge and have your own divine way. We ask it in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. And everybody said amen and amen. Well, Brother Dale Way is going to sing for us a song, and I had to look at it to get the title just right. Dale, we're glad you're with us there tonight. Come on over here and let me kind of just hug you before you sing. He's going to sing, I've been there too. 
Nobody. I had recently the privilege of preaching at that great church in Kerrville, Texas. And what a time we had. I'm glad you're with us tonight. Give him a great big hand. He's going to sing a song that says, Been There Too, Kale Way. Well, I know just what you're going through. Believe me, I've been there at least a time or two. You feel like you can't go on You fought through hell You barely hanging on Well, don't give up Don't back down I see your heart Hear your prayer When no one's around I'll help you make it through Just stay strong Just stay true I'll be right here To comfort you When you need a friend Yeah, I've been there too You try to walk the straight and narrow And this old world winding road The hill is steep You just want to stop you don't see how you'll make it to the top <laughs> Well, don't give up, don't back down See your heart, hear your prayer when no one's around I'll help you make it through Just stay strong, just stay true I'll be right here to comfort you Remember the trials of your yesterday You thought you'd never make it out But I was with you, yeah, all the way Just like I'm with you now Yeah, I brought you to where you're standing now Don't give up, don't back down I see your heart, hear your prayer When no one's around ha. I'll help you make it through Make it through Just stay strong, just stay true I'll be right here to comfort you When you need a friend Just know I've been Yeah, I've been there too Thank you, Dale, for that wonderful song, Isn't God a Good God? We'll give him praise and glory. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to have a great time tonight. Now, before I get started on this, I just want to say that you're going to be in for a treat tonight because uh, uh, several of these wonderful pastors had great fathers that also were in the ministry. And before I introduce this a great man of God sitting on this platform, I also have the privilege of preaching for his father. And uh, it's, it's kind of interesting, I guess, if you preach long enough, then you get to preach for the Father and then for the Son. And now that I understand, I'm getting ready to go to one of the grandsons. Oh, gee, that kind of uh, dates me a little bit too much, doesn't it? But uh, I'm so delighted to have this wonderful man of God, pastors in uh, Louisville, Kentucky, and uh, Dr. Bob Rogers has, uh, I don't know how long at the uh, World Prayer Center. Is that the name of the ch church? Yeah, Evangel World Prayer Center. Evangel uh, World Prayer Center. And then I had the privilege of preaching for your dad. And then, of course, he's in heaven with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. One of the great churches in the great state of Kentucky is uh, Dr. Bob Rogers. Give him a great big hand on Praise the Lord tonight. Good to have you with us, sir. Great to be here with you. Great. And then I got to come back and preach for you. Amen. 
You know, one of the greatest revivals we ever had was when you came. And I want you to, I want you, I'm not going to let get out of here until you give me a date. We'll you do can that. come back. We'll work on that. Well, Pastor, the, the most important thing that for me, when I have the uh, wonderful privilege here at Trinity to host uh, this uh, great Praise the Lord program, one of the things that I've always wanted to do to who, whomever the guest would be is to just say to them, you talk to us about what is on your heart. You've come a great distance and you've gotten here tonight and I want you to feel like when this is completed that uh, you were able to say that I really had an opportunity to talk about the things that uh, I want to talk about. So I want you to open your heart, but maybe before you get to that, if you just tell us a little bit, uh, because since it's Father's Day, a little bit about that. Uh, well, both your great mother and dad were extraordinary people, but your dad really, really impacted my life. Tell us about your dad, Wayman Rogers. You know, um, I'd be glad to. Uh, a lot of people, they've had a bad relationship uh, with their father, or maybe they didn't have a father. And it's hard for them to really get a handle on our Heavenly Father. Yeah. But I had a great dad. And I had a dad that loved me, and we were best friends. And um, he really taught me basically five things. Number one, he taught me how to work. He told me if I ever slept past, you know, 9 o'clock, I never would have any money in my life. Uh, secondly, he taught me how to uh, honor other people's property. And uh, thirdly, uh, he taught me to get up early. And, uh, I mean, I'd get up early, and he always had something for me to do. And fourthly, he taught me about sex. And uh, he, uh, he taught me how to treat a woman. And he, he, uh, he warned me from the very beginning. And fifthly, he taught me how to pray. And um, every father needs to teach their kids these things for them to be successful. Any one of those areas can really destroy them. But I had, a, I had a great dad. You know, one time my dad uh, fired me. Did I ever tell you about that? You know what? Tell, tell us about that. He fired you. Yeah, uh, I was, I'd pastored in, uh, in Lexington, and I came back and began to work with my dad. And one day he called me in, and he said, I've got to make some cuts, and I'm going to have to cut you, and I'm going to have to let you go. And then he got up and left. So I, I went and I told my wife, I said, that my dad just fired me. You know, I was really upset. I said, I'm, I work harder than anybody else, and he let me go. And that's how God called me into evangelism. And so I uh, began to, I had some meetings, and, in, and uh, in 10 days I was gone. I loaded up my car, and I took off, and I got out to Texas for this meeting, and I called this fellow where I was supposed to preach. I had $35 going, and he said, I've been trying to get a hold of you. I'm going to have to cancel that meeting. And I said, uh, I said, oh, man. He said, I haven't been able to get a hold of you. So I stayed over at a friend of mine's, and um, this guy had a one-bedroom apartment, and me and my wife and my daughter were sleeping on the couch. And uh, demons started attacking me. Uh -huh. and started biting me. I thought they were demons, but it turned out they were fleas. They had a dog, and, uh, and I had flea bites all over me. <laughs> and so um, I, uh, I finally got to some meetings, <laughs> And I was just, I mean, I was just barely making it from one place to the next. And I was down in Palestine, Texas. And I was praying, and the Lord spoke to me and said, uh, why are you mad at me? And I said, Lord, I'm not mad at you. And the Lord said, yes, you are. I said, no, I'm mad at my dad. My dad fired me. And I worked harder for him than anybody else. And the Lord said, no, you're mad at me. He just did what I told him to do. And oh, so uh, the Lord said, I, I want to teach you some mm. things that you can't yeah, learn. Yeah. And I remember I called my dad and, and he cried and I, I cried and we, we uh, grew closer than, yeah. than ever yeah. before. Yeah. One of the great experiences of my life as a young man was getting to preach for your father. And, the, and, and I called him one of the great visionaries of all time. He had a way, didn't he, of just being able to say and, and, ex and express what the Spirit of God had put on his heart and what a great man he was and what a great ministry he had, what a great church that he built. Well, uh, Pastor, talk a little bit about any of these things that are upon your heart right now. Uh, f for instance, what's the most pressing thing right now that you feel like the Holy Spirit's talking to you about? Well, I think uh, people all across the country can sense there's a, there's a stirring of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. 
And there is an anointing that is just an incredible anointing. Mm -hmm. you, you hear about the revival down in Florida. People are coming from all over the world. Mm -hmm. But Dwight, I sense there is a new move and breath of the Holy Spirit. And there's a, a scripture in Galatians. It's Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. Mm -hmm. It's that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles and we might receive the promise of the Spirit by faith. Mm -hmm. You know, when you talk about the blessing of Abraham, it's more than money. Mm -hmm. Now, people say, well, I want that blessing that Abraham had. Well, Abraham was blessed financially. The Bible says he was very rich in cattle and in silver and in gold. But he also was blessed with divine health. Mm -hmm. In the book of uh, Genesis 15, verse 15, it says that thou shall live to be a good old age. Well, we know that he, of course, had a, a he outlived uh, Sarah, and Sarah died when he was about 140. Mm -hmm. But the Bible goes on to say that he remarried. He remarried a woman by the name of Keturah. I don't know if it's true or not, but I heard she's 25 years old. So now he's 140 and he's chasing women that are 25 years old. And they have six more kids. She, she'd have to be young to have kids like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so he's now probably 150 some years old. And, and the Bible says, and he died a good old age. Now if you're going to live to be a good old age, that doesn't mean you're going to be in a nursing home. Or you can't hear, mm -hmm. or you can't remember, mm -hmm. or you can't uh, smell, or you don't have any teeth to eat. You're going to be in enjoying life. So God, number one, blessed him financially. That blessing of Abraham was a financial blessing. Secondly, it was a physical blessing. And thirdly, it was a spiritual blessing. Uh, in the Old Testament, the, there were seven gifts of the Holy Spirit that were in operation. The gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues did not come until the day of Pentecost. Well, here is Abraham. They call him a prophet. Uh, he prophesies what's going to happen 400 years down mm -hmm. in advance. Uh, he is a, uh, he heals the sick. Abimelech, he goes in and heals him and his family. Uh, he is, uh, has the gift of discerning of spirits. He sees angels. They're going down to Sodom. He talks with God. He uh, has all of the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit in operation. He has the gift of faith to raise his son from the dead. He has uh, the, the gift of the working of miracles. And so when it's very interesting when he came back from rescuing Lot, he went to see uh, Melchizedek, the priest of Salem. Now Melchizedek was a type of Christ. He wasn't a theophany, which is an appearance of Christ in the Old Testament, but he was a type of Christ. And he brought unto Abraham the bread and the wine, which was a type of the body and blood of Jesus, a type of the cross. And so he blessed him with the bread and the wine, or he blessed him with the cross. And then he came back, and he gave him a second blessing. And he said to him, he said, Blessed be the Lord uh, God, who's the maker of the heavens and the earth, the deliverer of all of thine enemies. So he blessed him with the bread and the wine, and then he brought him a second blessing, which was a type of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So when a person is baptized in the Holy Spirit, it is the fullness of the blessing of Abraham. You see what, I, what I'm Absolutely. sharing? About? And Absolutely. Now, now we, we teach people, when they receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they, they, have, they, they get to speak in tongues. Uh, they get to go cast out devils. They get to uh, pray for the sick. And there's a power, and there is. But there's more than that. There is something that happens to your body that strengthens your body to resist sickness. There's something about the baptism of the Holy Spirit that enables a person to make more money than they could ever make in their life. But the problem with most Christians is 
they never have learned how to flow in the baptism of the Holy Spirit and pray in their prayer language and then begin to pray with their interpretation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so God is not showing them and speaking to them as he did to the patriarchs, as he did to Abraham, as he did to Isaac. Here's Isaac, and it, there was a famine, and it said, uh, God said unto Isaac, don't go down into Egypt, but stay here. And I will bless you with the blessing of your father. Yeah. And I will open to you and give you the land. And the Bible says he sold in the land, and the same received a hundredfold, for the Lord was with him. But God has to speak to us, and he speaks to us as we pray in the Holy Spirit. And then we pray with our understanding. We're praying that interpretation of the Spirit. And Dwight, I really sense a new explosion of the Holy Spirit, of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and the fullness of what the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. can do. I do too. Mm -hmm. And have you seen, seen a new hunger? Well, for the Holy you Spirit? know, when, when you're talking about this, when, when the, you're so right. I, I think if ever there has been not so much a misunderstanding as a, as a pausing when people get the impression that when we that believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, it is not for us to take this Holy Spirit and then we say we speak in tongues, which comes from heaven, Acts chapter 2, and then we stop there. But that isn't the end of the experience. That's only the beginning of the experience. You remember, Pastor, when uh, John saw our Lord coming and he, and he made this phrase, he said, uh, I baptize you with water unto repentance but he that's coming after me will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire well when the hundred and twenty received the Holy Spirit they didn't just camp in that room for the rest of their time they spoke in a language that those people that had come for Passover every one of them began to hear them speak in languages that they understood and so what happened in that was the Holy Spirit made them all one to what could not be accomplished while our Lord was walking on the earth that they all could become one. But when they received the Holy Spirit after the ascension of our Lord, then they had an endowment of power that caused them for once and for all to lay aside their own egos, their own agendas, their own personalities, and they took on the ministry of our Savior. He said, you're going to receive power. And then you remember in John 14 and 11, he said, believe me that I am in the Father, the Father in me. Or else believe it for the very work's sake. Then he would say, verily, verily, I send you, he that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do. Well, you can't do a greater work than what our Lord has done. But what he's talking about is greater in number. That now then we have these people that have become like Christ in the likeness of Christ. And it's, and it's like when you take the dye and then you take the cloth and you put the cloth into the dye. And the purpose of putting the cloth into the dye is to take on the color of the dye. Well, the disciples had not taken on the full color of what our Lord was until they had received that power of the Holy Spirit and then they became more like him to do the works of our Lord. The cloth and the dye became one. And that's what I believe happened on the day of Pentecost. They finally became what he had mandated them to become, to go forth and do the works of our precious Lord and Savior. And that has not changed, Pastor, to this very day now more than ever. You know, that, that is so true. And what's happened is, like you said, people receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but they stop. And they do not pray in their prayer language. And then they, or they'll, they'll pray in their prayer language, and they won't interpret. So their mind is not illuminated to what 
the Spirit is saying. In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 13, it says, I will pray in the Spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing in the Spirit, I'll sing in the understanding. And most of the time, when you pray in the Holy Spirit, then you stop and you begin to pray with your understanding. That's what you've said. And I have learned that you can begin to, to direct your prayers. Like, I can begin to pray for my son. I've got a son named Justin. And I can begin to focus my thinking in on Justin, not knowing where he may be, what he's involved in, mm -hmm. but begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. And I'm praying in the perfect will for Justin. Then I can aim it over here and pray for Rachel mm -hmm. in the Holy Spirit. Then I can pray for my wife in the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. And I can pray for my money. Mm -hmm. I was praying. I, I, I really needed a financial miracle. I needed a bunch of money. And so I, I decided I was going to fast. And I, and I was fasting. And then I, I, was, I began to pray, and I was praying to the Holy Ghost. And, um, and then I started praying with my understanding. And the Holy Spirit said, uh, I'm going to give you the $450,000 you need, and I want you to call this man. That came right out of my voice as I was praying in the Holy Ghost. So I called this man. I never met him. And... Um, I called him, and uh, his name was Deal, Mr. Deal. So I called him, and I said, uh, and he answered the phone. He said, this is uh, Willie Deal. And I said, uh, what would you say your name was? He said, I'm Willie, this is Willie Deal. And I said, I started laughing. He said, I said, I'm sorry, I've, I've never met a, a banker. His name was Willie Deal. And he, he started laughing, and we got talking. And... Uh, and we talked for a little bit, and he says, uh, what, uh, what can I do for you? I said, I need to borrow $450,000. And we got talking what it was about. It was about a TV station. And uh, in 10 minutes, he loaned me the money. I remember another time I was, I was praying in the Holy Spirit, and I had built this building. And we were, and I could not raise any money. I, I just absolutely, my money stopped. And... Um, and I said, Lord, I can't understand this. There must somebody on my staff must be in sin. And so I called my pastor here and I said, Now I want to know which one of you all is committing adultery. So I, I know one of you all is in sin uh, because this money's dried up for me. Now, I'm not pastor. No, no, I'm not. I said, right, What about you? No, 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 no. And so I said, Well, let's just pray. And so I start praying in the Holy Spirit. And when I start praying, the interpretation, the Lord said, You're the one who's making a mistake. He said, I told you to go see a guy about some money. And I, uh, so I said, all right, Lord, I'll go see him. And, and in 10 minutes, he loaned me $2.1 million. And we wrote the deal out on a napkin. Wow. But it's the power of the power Holy Ghost. Power of the Spirit. Holy Ghost. Power. Pastor, would you look in that camera right there? And uh, for the people right now that have locked in on what you're ministering about, uh, I just feel like there's a prayer that's in your spirit right now that if you will uh, reach out with your hands there's no magic in this but you're just reaching out by faith unto God we lift our hands unto God as pastor prays for you right now whatever the need is it may be in a financial area it may be lost loved ones it may be the most important decision a process that you're in right now of your life and you need to move from the natural into the realm of the supernatural and the Spirit with groanings which cannot be uttered will make an intercession on your behalf. Let the Spirit of God minister to you as Pastor prays for you right now. You know, uh, there's someone that's viewing, and you really, you're a businessman. And you have a, a great financial yes. need. You are searching for money. And during the next 48 hours... God is going to give you direction and show you exactly what to do. Yes, yes. Sir. I believe that people that are viewing that have a financial need, God only has to send one person into your life. It only takes one person. Yes. We prayed one time that God would save a millionaire and pay his tithe. In two weeks, Colonel Sanders got saved in our church, and his tithe got us out of debt. It only takes one person. One person, and I believe in the next seven days, there's people viewing that God can send at least one person into your life. I want you to stretch your hand out towards the television right now. I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bind and rebuke every devil, every spirit of darkness 
I come against every financial difficulty in Jesus' name. And Lord, during the next seven days, I ask that you would send at least one person into the life of those that are receiving this prayer now, and you would deliver them absolutely for the glory of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you receive that, just begin to thank God out loud. Just begin to thank Him right now, and God will bring it to pass. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Let's give Pastor Bob Rogers a big hand. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, uh, Happy Father's Day, happy Pastor. Father's I sure love you and appreciate you so much. Thank you for coming to be with us today. Dale Way is ready to sing for us right now a song entitled, I'm a Father Too. Give him a great big hand, Pastor Dale Way from Kerrville, Texas. I remember well the day when I heard the doctor say it's a boy I was so glad years to come brought special times must have learned every nursery rhyme and I won't forget when he called me dad fatherhood such a glorious thing you begin to feel the bond between the child and you then I heard God speak from up above he said I understand that kind of love cause you see I'm a father too I'm a father too I'm a father too Father, to you, I will see you through. No matter what you do, and should you stumble or fall, I'll be. Cause I'm a father too Two thousand years ago I had a boy and I watched him grow And you know He looked just like me he was my only begotten son He was the only one I could send To set the captives free From Bethlehem to Galilee To the cross of Calvary I've seen him laugh I've seen him cry And on that dark and cloudy day on a hillside far away I stood and watched my little boy die I'm a father too And I long to be Oh, father to you I will see you through Father, too. Uh, 
give him a big hand, Pastor Dale Wade. You know, I, I was, I was, I told uh, Pastor Hooper, I'm about to introduce him in just a minute. He writes every song he sings. He writes them, and and most uh, all of them come from experiences in his life. And I and I told him uh, a while ago before we went on the air. I said I think it would be a wonderful book if you wrote the uh, story behind each song because they're just absolutely amazing. Thank you, Pastor Dale Way. Give him a great big hand. Wasn't that beautiful? This precious man sitting on this platform is a man of God. He was saved, filled with the Spirit of God, called into the ministry. He is a martial arts black belt many times over. He can not only put the hurt on the devil, he can put the hurt on, well, we won't even go there. But uh, he's an amazing man, born again of the Holy Spirit, and he pastors in a beautiful community near Huntsville, Alabama, called Harvest, Alabama. And I'm talking about Pastor Jamie Hooper. He's the pastor of Christ Worship Center in Harvest, Alabama. Please give him a big welcome to praise the Lord tonight. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, Dwight. Well, I know uh, I want to tell people quickly, you, you've got a new uh, mustache there, and you've got a new, uh, that, that looks real nice, but I know there's a reason behind all of that, you were telling me. Yeah, well, I had, uh, actually, uh, I had surgery uh, about three weeks ago. and uh, On they, your lip? On my lip, because I had a, a little blister turned into a mess, and uh, so they said I can't shave, so I thought I'd look a little stylish, get a little uh, thing here going. Well, I'll tell you what, it look, doesn't it, folks? I think it just looks really good <laughs> there tonight. <laughs> Thank you, We're honored to have you, oh, and you. I know your wife, uh, Kim, drove up with you from Harvest, Alabama. So I want to get right to this. Uh, what's the Lord laid on your heart? And I know they wanted us tonight particularly to talk uh, some about Father's Day and, and uh, what this means to us. So I'm just going to kind of get out of your way and to just follow your lead. I know something's on your heart about that. Yes, Dwight. You know, um, I had a great father. Uh, he passed away last year, and my mother. And my father, I've never heard in my entire life my father say one bad thing about another human being. Never. Yeah. And um, so my father was very special to me. He, he, uh, he loved me. I had a great father, a great mother. I come from a great home. They loved me. They cared for me. And uh, just cherished both of them. But um, something else the Lord laid on my heart here, and that's spiritual fathers. You know, so many people, I think, t t to a point, don't realize how important a spiritual father is. I mean, you can have a pastor, but you need to connect with that pastor and allow him to become a father figure in your life, a spiritual father. But not only that, you need to learn how to become a son or a daughter. Now, right here, God really laid this on my heart. Let me open my Bible up here in uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 19, and this is what it says. This is Paul talking about Timothy. And he says, But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy shortly unto you, that I also may be a good comfort when I know your state. For I have no man like-minded or of the same spirit who will naturally care for your state. Now, verse 21 really uh, takes it home. For all seek their own and not the things which are Jesus Christ. For you know the full proof of him. As a son with the Father, he hath served with me in the gospel. Think about that, Dwight. It says right here that all seek their own and not the things which are Jesus Christ. Now, let me say this right here. Uh, there's only one star in the church. Only one star. Only one. Only one, and his name is Jesus. Jesus Christ. And I've got to say this right now, Dwight. It's in my spirit. I've got to let it out. Here it is. Okay. Jesus saves, Jesus heals, and Jesus, Jesus is coming, coming again. again. We've got to get ready. He's on the way. Hallelujah. <laughs> And, and, and it's so important here. Now, let me just uh, jump into this because it's just on my heart. It's burning in my spirit. You know, Paul was a spiritual father to Timothy, and Timothy was a spiritual son to Paul. And Paul instructed Timothy here in 1 Timothy chapter 4, beginning in verse 11, to be an example to the believers in the word, in the way you live, in, 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 in this, to live holy, to, to walk in the love of God, in the spirit, in faith, and in purity. Mm -hmm. To be an example. To, mm -hmm. to have these things, uh, to live these things out before the people. And it's right here. Here it is. Watch this now. Jesus was the message. 
Yeah. He was the center. He was the center. He was the message. Yes. And Dwight, I believe with all my heart, we, we, we've we got this going on in the church. We've got programs. We've got this. We've got that. We've got coffee. We've got donuts. We've got everything imaginable. But what we need in the church today, all across America and the world, is the power of the Holy Ghost. I believe that. The manifestation yep. of God. I believe that. And we need people to connect with spiritual fathers and make up their mind not to back up, not to bow down, not to waver in the day of adversity, temptation, or trials, but to sell out yes. to this one thing, to find a church to put down roots and connect there with a spiritual father so that they can be fed. And not only that, stay there and wave the storms that yes. come. Too many yes. people run when trouble comes to a yes. church. Yes. We need to learn how to stay put and learn and grow because that is so important and to connect. Yes. You know, it, it, the Bible teaches that Timothy stuck with Paul through the thick and the thin. Mm -hmm. And he learned from Paul. He served Paul. He waited on Paul. And Paul instructed him into the things of God. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and they were full of power. The Holy Ghost yeah. made the difference. It wasn't just works of men. It was works of the Holy Ghost. And this burns in my heart, Dwight, that today in America, oftentimes, especially where I live, we got a lot of church hoppers. They go from one church and to another church, and they don't really stick, and they don't really grow. They just kind of move around. And I believe that God is calling people today to find a church, mm -hmm. find a spiritual father, and mm -hmm. connect there, mm -hmm. stay there, flourish, put roots mm -hmm. down, and grow strong in God. Mm -hmm. Well, Pastor, so many people today, and particularly since we're on talking about the fathers, if the fathers could realize this, just as they become, I mean, it is innate in them. It's an, it's an innate protective spirit that is inside them that they are willing to give their lives for that entire family and for their children. That's right. They need to, to also think about this. They need to realize that becoming the priest of their home, by that becoming the leader, not saying do as your mother tells you to That's do, right. That's right. go to church with your mother, That's right. because uh, they're going to turn out just like you, Dad. I, I did a sermon. Uh, I did a sermon one time, and, and I and I called it. It's ten o'clock. Do you know where your children are? That's right. And uh, and one of the points in that, uh, I I played a little song, and it was that song by uh, I believe his name is Chapin. Yeah. And it was that famous little song that goes, uh, I'm, I want to be just like you, Dad. I just want to be just like you. That's right. And, and what uh, young people uh, look at today isn't so much about what is coming out of the father's mouth or the, or the mother's mouth, for that matter, but it's more by modeling of what they say. Yes. In other words, they're doing it by example. Yes. And so, Pastor, we need a word from you tonight admonishing fathers as they would protect an entire intruder coming into that home they would protect their family at any cost even to the cost of their life that's right then how much more with the spiritual forces today more than ever that are bent on coming in to destroy the lives of their children and their grandchildren talk to us about how important it is for fathers to become the protector and the priest of that home you know, Dwight, uh, this is really so important to me. As far as I'm concerned, in my house, no devil is getting in my house. Yeah. Because it is so important that Kim and I model the gospel in front of our kids. That, we, that they realize that don't just do what I say, do what I do. Do as I do. Because oftentimes we're saying a lot, but oftentimes a lot of people, and I've seen this, are not necessarily doing what they're supposed to do. They'll, you'll go to church, you'll go through the motions, you, you, you'll go to church on Sunday, and you'll you pay your tithe, and that's mm -hmm. good. But really, you'll, you know, you'll go to you know, R-rated movies, you'll watch things on television you're not supposed to watch. I think it's so important that the father becomes the priest of the home, bring prayer into that home, bring the Bible, study the Bible with your family, and point them to Christ. Yes. Yes. That is so important. Yes. Model it. Don't just say it. Do the, perform the gospel. Live the gospel. And, and let the kids see the manifestation of the glory and the power of God as the Father does that which God has called him to do. Yes. Do you know the thing that I, I remember among many other things? That, one of the most important things I remember even as a child, that my father would get up in the morning, get up early, and I learned this scripture when I was probably uh, uh, just a child. 
And the first thing, he w I would hear him in there, bless, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. And he would begin to quote that. Then he'd begin to quote Psalms 23, that the Lord is my shepherd. And I mean, even as a child, it just seemed like we picked up a lot of those habits, if you will, of, of my own father when he would walk through that house. And I would hear him walk through that house saying, very similar to the words you said right there, maybe not in those precise words, but he would say, uh, in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood over my son James and over my son Dwight, over my son Rex and over my uh, daughter Joy. And he grew up with that. But it was almost like, it was almost like a a sense of protection that he was building around that home. And I just feel like tonight, Pastor, say that there's people that's watching right now that the enemy has succeeded temporarily in seizing one of your children. And they've become poster kids for bad behavior. And they're not living for God. And I just feel like saying to you right now that they may, not, they may not be paying much attention to what you're saying right now, but they are watching your actions. That's exactly right. And I believe in the name of Jesus that you can just begin to stand in your faith. This is what's in my spirit. Until they're able to stand in their faith. That's right. Don't become, don't succumb to the fear of the consequences of the road that they're traveling right now. In other words, it, it's not going to do much good to say, you're just killing me. You're putting me in an early, early grave. But take dominion and authority and notify the devil what Pastor said a while ago. Uh, the devil's not going to get your children. That's right. He's not going to get that family. But a father's got to stand up and begin to declare, I am taking charge of this situation in my house through the power of intercession and through the power of prayer you know Dwight it's really a battle the, the, the battle here is the devil is after our kids he wants our kids I know that. yes I have three wonderful kids and I, you have to stand in your faith you have to believe God you have to confess the word you really have to draw the line in the sand and tell that devil you're not crossing this line you have to apply the blood to your children you have to apply the blood to your entire home and just really tell the devil this is off limits yes. you cannot cross this line yes. and if you do you're not only going to be in trouble with me you're going to be in trouble with Jesus yes. Jesus yes. is going to take care yes. of this yes. and you have to put your faith in the word of God. You know, uh, there are a lot of people I know watching, and they have kids that have left. They, they, they're prodigals. They, they've walked away from God. But, you know, I believe in my spirit that God is I going to bring them home. They're going to come do. home. Praise God is God. calling them home, and they're going to have an encounter with Jesus. How many believe it tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, now, Pastor, I, I just feel like this, uh, this uh, camera right here. That uh, I, I, want, I want people to, to sense this with you tonight. That if you have sons and daughters, uh, grandchildren, uh, somebody in your family, but we're particularly zeroing in right now on, on our children and our grandchildren. Yes. And, uh, and, and I, know, I know people, I know pastors right now that are just going through some difficult times with uh, the enemy walking in and just trying to seize one of those children and, and get them off of the track. Uh, and many of you are experiencing that right now. But I want you to know there's two things. I always remember Brother Norval Hayes said this. It stuck with me. He said when his daughter Zona was running with that wrong crowd on drugs and living a life away from God, the devil would say to him, I'm going to kill her. But he said one day the Spirit of the Lord came to him when he was so broken. And he said, Norval, I want you to do two things. Number one, I want you to just love her unconditionally like I loved you. And number two, I want you to turn her over to me. You turn her over to me. And you tell me, whatever it takes, bring her back to the Father's house. Take as a pastor and a father into that camera and uh, put your arms around people that's going through things right now and minister to them. You know, for years, uh, I've traveled all over America competing in martial art tournaments. I was, um, at one time, the best that there was. And uh, I fought on many opponents uh, during that time. 
But I've realized as a pastor, as a father, really our opponent is the devil. He wants our kids. That's it. And you know, Paul was a spiritual father to Timothy, but to all our fathers, we are all spiritual fathers to our children. Not only natural fathers, but spiritual. We feed them not only naturally, but spiritually. We bring them to church so a pastor can connect with them and feed them. But we have to become, as fathers, priests of our homes. And I want to speak right now to all those parents who have wayward children. They're away from home, they're, or they're doing things they should not do, and you really don't know what to do, or you're at your wit's end because uh, they're old enough now that they can legally do what they want. And they'll even turn to you and say, I can do what I want to do. I want to make my own choices. And I know how gut-wrenching that is. But I want to say this. I don't care how far they go. I don't care what they do. I don't care what they say to you, how deeply it hurts, I can tell you this, that your prayers will find them. They cannot outrun Jesus. He will outrun them. They'll run right smack dab into Him. He will change them. He will save them. He will revolutionize their lives, and they will return as prodigals coming back to the Father's house. And when you see them, you put a robe on them, a ring on them, put shoes on their feet. You have a feast because I'm telling you, Jesus will find and save them no matter where they are. Hallelujah. I believe it. Hallelujah. Lord, I believe Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pray for them right now. Right. Every one of you that have lost sons or daughters, grandchildren, whomever it may be, just lock in right now in your faith as uh, Pastor Jamie Hooper prays for us right now. Right now. Let's just pray. Dwight, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. all these parents, fathers and mothers, God, who have children, who have uh, God walked the wrong way, went down the wrong road, God, uh, chose the wrong friends. God, I pray for the prodigals, God, that they would come home, that you will find them, Father. You will change them. You will cover them with your blood. And I command the devil's hold to loosen his hold off their lives and to in loose the them and Jesus. let them be free in let the name of Jesus and bring them home now them home. in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Hallelujah. the name of Jesus, in the name of Glory to God. In the name of Jesus, in the, name, the of name that is above every name. I believe we ought to praise him right now, just in advance. Just praise him right now. Hallelujah. Father, I give you praise we and give glory. You praise God. I give you praise and glory. We, we don't see them where they are. We see them where what they're going to become. Yes, God. In the name of Jesus, we take that dominion and authority. Yes, God. As Shammah stood in the middle of that, of that lintel patch, that bean patch, and he notified the Philistines, I'm standing in the middle of this patch, and no longer are you going to take my property. And we stand in the middle of the, of the path of our own children and grandchildren. That in the name of Jesus, we serve Jesus. notice upon the enemy. Yes. That he may, he may think that this victory he has right now is permanent in their life. But in the name of Jesus, we stand forth in our faith in until they stand in their faith. And yes. we cry mercy and yes. we plead the precious blood yes. of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Almighty yes. God. Now, parents, lift your hands and give him praise and Hallelujah. glory. Thank him in advance glory because God. they're coming to God. Glory they're coming God. to God. They're coming Hallelujah. to God. They're coming to God. They're coming to God. Dale Way is going to say, tell, tell Pastor Jamie Hooper how much you appreciate him being here tonight. And Dale Way is going to sing one of the most incredible songs I've ever heard that he wrote and it says Calvary is the reason why give Pastor Delway a big hand sing it for us Pastor the song tells what they were talking about lost people out there but God knows where to find us I was lost but you knew where to find me I was hungry You were bread For my soul I was thirsty And you gave Living water You were 
were my shelter when I had no place to go. That's why sometimes I just want to praise you. Yeah, and sometimes just to speak your name. Oh, sometimes I just I want to thank you. Without asking you for a thing Oh, sometimes I lift my hands to you Then sometimes all I do is cry That I have, I owe to you. Lord and Calvary's the reason why. When I think of the love. I was thinking about that song he was singing. Uh, I think about Dale and I think about his life. And one of these times, I, I just hope I can have about 30 minutes with Dale. If you haven't heard his testimony of where he was when the Lord saved him, then you would understand what's behind all these songs that he uh, writes, the Holy Spirit gives him. Give him a big hand. Tell him how much we love him and appreciate him tonight. Well, this man has traveled uh, all over the world, uh, it seems like, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. For many, many years, pastored the great church in Alexandria, Louisiana. And now his wonderful son is uh, carrying on that great work in Alexandria. And your other son is the pastor of where your father pastored in West Columbia, 
Texas. Actually, my younger brother, Bobby, you know, I'm as my older brother, Mike, then myself, then uh, my sister and her husband, Pastor Houston. My brother, Mike, pastors in Dallas, and my younger brother, pastors my dad's church. Your dad's church. Yeah, so brother, all of us is. are preachers, and, and God knows that's a miracle. And I knew your <laughs> wonderful father and your precious, precious mother. Yeah. Please welcome tonight a great minister of the gospel. He preaches around the world traveling, and he wrote a great book called Bloodline of a Champion. Yes. Am I correct in that? Please give him a great big hand. Dr. Mark uh, Hankins to praise the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Welcome. Good to have you. I'm so glad to be here. Well, I'm going to just turn you loose and just get out of your way because uh, one of the uh, uh, talk a little bit about your dad, and we're going to talk about the blood of Jesus here. I have to say something about my dad because my dad and my mom were a team full of faith, and uh, their uh, anointing, the power of the Holy Spirit, their prayers. Uh, if it hadn't been for my dad's faith, my mom's faith, uh, I would not be here today. I would either be in a penitentiary. Uh, or I would be dead, one or the other, because my mom and my dad kept doing what they were saying earlier. Is my mom would say, I plead the blood of Jesus. Over I did too. I did. So my dad's friends with your dad, and they were just great men. My, my dad uh, was a great man of prayer. He was a great pastor, and uh, they prayed for me. I mean, many times it just seemed like the devil would do everything he could to try to destroy uh, my life. And my mom and my dad, my mom gave me this scripture, Luke 22, verse 31 and 32. And she said the same thing that Jesus said to Simon Peter. He said, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. I always say that makes you shredded wheat. But Satan hath desired to have you, that he might sift you like wheat. But she said, he will not have you. Because I have prayed for you that your Hallelujah. faith will not fail you. Hallelujah. And so my mom and my dad continued to believe the best and speak the word of God and surround us with faith and hope and love. And my mom's favorite line, of course, my dad too, was, I plead the blood of Jesus. And they applied that blood over the doorpost of our family day after day, morning after morning, that the destroyer would not enter in and destroy our family and destroy the children. And now as a result, my son is pastoring. And that's a miracle from God, the mercy of God and the great blood of Jesus that was shed for us. And my mom just really knew how to apply that blood. And then my dad, you know, I always tell the story about my, my mom running around the church. You know, and my mom would praise the Lord. Of course, that embarrassed me when I got, when I'd get older and, and uh, my mom would run and I'd, people would say, who is that woman? I'd say, I have no idea who that woman is. But my, my mom would run around church. She'd go, hallelujah, hallelujah. She'd run around the church. Of course, that didn't, that wasn't the end of it. When my mom would run, she'd be praising the Lord for victory. You know, victories were taking place. And, yeah. and then uh, Sister Houston would laugh and yeah. then Sidney Smith would stomp and then somebody would shout out and roll and then my daddy would get up and say now some of you think that's not necessary and it's not necessary unless it's necessary so while they were trying to figure that out my mama finished running but my daddy knew the power of the holy spirit yeah, that the holy spirit he would always say could do more in five minutes than we could do in five years and when the, the holy spirit gets to moving he just takes care of business supernaturally oh amen i always remember how many people would come up from time to time maybe some um, really educated whomever would sometimes people come and say you know i i don't know about all that running and jumping and shouting and said i i've studied the bible there isn't one place in there jesus ever ran or shout but then of course you read i tell them well it says but he sure touched a lot and they went running and leaping yeah. and shouting for joy that's what the lord does doesn't he yeah. gives us joy in our heart well uh the blood of jesus i know that has been i have one of uh, your series on that and i'm telling you mark i listen to it and listen to it and listen to it you know as i i studied the book of hebrews from hebrews 9 10 11 12 13 one of the favorite scriptures is hebrews 13 20 and 21 it says, through the blood of the everlasting covenant that God makes you perfect in every good work mm -hmm. to do his will, mm -hmm. working in you that which is well-pleasing mm -hmm. in his sight. Yeah. Through the blood of the everlasting the covenant, we don't have to continue to live with just some permissive thing. Yeah. 
but God will bring us into his perfect Amen. will for our lives. Amen. Not because we are perfect, but because the blood of Jesus is perfect. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I love Hebrews 10, 14 in the Message Bible. And it says that Jesus was the perfect sacrifice by the perfect person to perfect some very imperfect people. Wow. <laughs> say that. say that again. Say that, that Jesus again. was the perfect sacrifice by the perfect person to perfect some very imperfect people. In other words, when Jesus' blood was shed on the cross, God looked at that and he said, that's perfect. I think that imperfect thing in there was for me. <laughs> that was for all of us. Yeah, all and so his blood was perfect. Yeah. And now God sees us yeah. through the blood of Jesus. Blood. And he grants us perfect fellowship with the Father. Perfect fellowship because of the blood of Jesus. And when we apply that blood by faith, then that blood has power. Mm -hmm. I like to say that it reaches to heaven, to the heaven. highest place. And yet it also reaches into your heart, into your conscience, to remove sin and to remove guilt and to remove self-condemnation so that the voice of your conscience can give have confidence before God yeah. that the blood of Jesus has cleansed me from hallelujah. all sin. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah Amen. on that one. Thank God for the blood. When, uh, <clears throat> when we hear so much today, uh, and I don't want to, I, I'm not trying to make my point look good or better by making something else look less, but it just does indeed seem that there are just so many that are little by little eroding the message of the blood of Christ. But I'm here to tell you, as far as I'm concerned, my heels are dug in. I'm going to preach on the blood of Jesus. One wrote me one time and said, you might as well speak of the wool of the lamb as I speak of the blood of the lamb. It doesn't make any difference. Well, I don't want to be too feisty about it, but my Bible said, let every man be a liar, let God's word be true. I still believe it is only through the shed blood of Jesus Christ that a man is going to make it from earth to glory. Yeah. Faith in Jesus Christ. Yeah. Anybody else share that? Yeah. Amen. Well, Pastor, just fire away, and I'm going to be your amen of sitting here. With well, you know, um, Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 12 says, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, mm -hmm. but with his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, and he obtained eternal redemption for us. In other words, when Jesus was raised from the dead, he took his blood into heaven itself, into the holiest place, right into the presence of God, and put his blood on the mercy seat, right where the glory of God is. And when he applied his blood there, it says he obtained eternal redemption for us. for us. Other translation says that he purchased our complete deliverance. In other words, what Jesus did included everything that we would ever need. And on the cross, when his blood was shed, and then he took that blood into heaven, that his blood has done something for us in heaven. But if you go down to Hebrews 9, 14, it says that how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So there you can see the blood of Jesus was applied in heaven. And there it is recorded in witnesses that we have been redeemed throughout eternity. Yes. But he says that blood must also be applied in our hearts. He said the blood does something for us in heaven, but it does something in us in our conscience and it's applied in us by faith that means Romans 325 it uses that phrase that through faith in his blood we have a propitiation that simply means a reconciliation or a restoration to fellowship with God a restoration to favor because of the blood of Jesus and it says through faith in his blood I love the Amplified Bible because it says that we have a mercy seat Mercy seat. In other words, that faith in the blood of Jesus is the mercy seat. In the Old Hallelujah. Testament, the mercy seat was the meeting place. In Exodus 25, 22, God said, I will meet you there at the mercy seat, and I will commune with you intimately there. Because that's the place blood was applied. Mm 
In the Old Testament, that was a geographical location. In the New Testament, wherever faith in the blood of Jesus is applied, God said, that's the mercy seat, and I will meet you there. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. That, that's a good shouting spot right there. I submit that. <laughs> Your you, mama's going to be shouting right now. <laughs> She's probably running right now. But <laughs> I plead the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Amen. But you could not meet with God and not know it. Yeah. Now, you can be religious, and you can maybe even go through some form of church. But when you meet with God, Woo, you are changed. Ooh, you receive yes, yes. his goodness and yes. his mercy, his glory. And so the way to meet with God is not through some ritual. No. I love what First Peter chapter 1, verse 18 and 19 says, that we were not redeemed with corruptible things, such as silver and gold, uh -huh. but with the precious blood of Jesus, as of a lamb without blemish and oh, without hallelujah. spot. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. That means in the Old Testament, when they came to worship, the priest did not examine the worshiper. The priest examined the lamb. And if they brought a, a spotless, flawless lamb, if the sacrifice was perfect, then the priest examined the sacrifice and accepted the worshiper based on the condition of the sacrifice. Of the sacrifice. Yeah. So when we come to God, we come through faith in the blood of Jesus. His blood alone has done everything. His blood plus nothing minus nothing. His blood alone has done it all. All right, don't make Hallelujah. me jump off this His stage blood. up here. So when, when, you, <laughs> when you bring faith in the blood say father god my trust my confidence is not in what i have done yes nor what and i did not do but his, my confidence is in what jesus has done and god looks at the sacrifice and he says that's perfect and he brings us into perfect fellowship with himself and he won't even bring up your sin he won't even talk about your past he'll bring you in and accept you through the blood of hallelujah, jesus. hallelujah. take a moment and shout hallelujah for the blood yeah. You know, uh, Pastor, people that are watching tonight here, all right, I'm, I don't want to bring up anybody's name in this, but a strong personality, real strong, wealthy, famous personality on television recently said, my, my wife brought it in and played it for me. She said, just so you'll, you'll know exactly what was said. So as, as they say, I heard it out of her mouth. But probably one of the wealthiest, they say, in Hollywood, uh, this entertainer, daytime, that's on there. And she has quite the following these days, quite the following. She endorses candidates and making a big thing yeah. about Well, in any event, she said it with her mouth. So she was talking about on this, I heard her say it, something to this effect. You know, everybody's just trying to get to the, to the God or the, the power, whomever it might be. And... But some are going this way, some are going that way, some are going this way. I'm just kind of paraphrasing the way. A woman stood up and she said, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. What about Jesus in the Bible? Well, what about it, she replied. Jesus isn't the only way to the yeah. Father. So let's, let's, you and I just, you talk, and let's set the biblical record straight. Do you want us to tell you the truth, or do you want us to go with what's popular going on? Uh, forgive my Texas vernacular. It ain't going to happen here. We're not going with what's popular. We're going with thus saith the word of the Lord, and here is what the truth of all of that is about. Let's just talk about the only way to the Father is through the Son, Jesus Christ. The only way to heaven is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. The only way. Yes, and really the problem today is that we underestimate, number one, man's condition. We think that, that man can be rehabilitated. But what happened when Adam sinned, he died spiritually, separated from God, and actually came under the authority of Satan. So for him to be redeemed, the price had to be paid. And Jesus came and paid that price on the cross. So if you underestimate man's condition, you think, well, he can be educated or rehabilitated and we can take that problem out. But really it takes the blood of Jesus to reach into the heart of a man. I love to say it this way, that the blood of Jesus is liquid love. 
that flows from the heart of God. Hallelujah. And it reaches into the heart of yeah. man yeah. and brings hope and heals us where we have been broken and we have been wounded by life. And psychology can't heal you and education can't fix you and Hallelujah. nobody can rehabilitate Hallelujah. you. But the blood of Jesus has power Hallelujah. and it reaches on the inside of you. Hallelujah. And redeems your life redeems from destruction. Redeems your life. Breaks the power of Satan. The blood of Jesus, the Bible says, that we overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. That means the way I say it is never bring a knife to a gunfight. Mm. In other words, you are up against a supernatural adversary of the devil. Yep. You cannot bring psychology. You cannot just bring some little saying. But when you come with the blood of Jesus, oh, yeah. every demon shakes. Come on, hell trembles because of the power that's in his blood. Because his blood was not only shed on the cross, but his blood, he took it to heaven. And it witnesses before God. And it speaks of the mercy of God. And it redeems our life from the power of Satan. What can what? Wash away, away my man. sin. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Hallelujah. Jesus. This is all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. And in heaven, we're going to be singing about the blood. It's a language that is spoken in heaven, but it's a language in the earth. It witnesses in heaven, and it witnesses in the earth that Jesus is alive. He's our Redeemer, and that we are washed in the blood of Jesus. Our sins are washed away, washed and away. we have eternal life, and washed we're a new blood. creation in Christ, and we're heirs of God. And and join heirs with Jesus Christ. By the blood, it came by the blood. Glory we are blood to God. blessed, blood bold, hallelujah. Everything comes by the blood of Jesus. Are there any blood-bought children of God in the house Glory tonight? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise hallelujah. him right now. Praise him right now. Amen. Then, Pastor, what we need to do then, we need to keep going on into the next step. Then the next step is that people have to understand is there are not many ways. It isn't, it isn't Jesus and Buddha. It isn't Jesus and Mohammed. It isn't Jesus and good works. It isn't Jesus and anything else. Anything else that you use as a crutch to assist salvation is not saved through faith the shed blood of Jesus Christ. It's nothing but the blood. Actually, nothing but the blood. God said, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. I don't want to see nothing else. Nothing else. I don't want to see this or that or your psychology. I just want to see the blood. So somebody has to get the blood and apply it. And apply In it. the Old Testament, the blood was applied with hyssop. In the New Testament, the blood is applied by faith. And it's applied with the hyssop of your tongue. In other words, your voice and your words, words of faith in the blood of Jesus, and you apply that blood every day. I, I love to see what happened in the Old Testament, Hebrews 9. It says, when they had church, that Moses took blood, and he sprinkled all the people. So if you went to church to worship God, he put blood on you. Then he put blood on the book. Then he put blood on the podium. And he's sprinkling blood everywhere. So if you left church or to worship God in those days, people say, what you got on you? Where you been? Say, I went to worship God. What's that on you say? I got blood on me. That means if you want to meet with God, you better have some blood on you. That means your blood applied. It's not just blood believed in. It's blood applied by faith. All right, then Exodus, what is it, 12, 13, when, of course, they're going to get ready to leave, it talks about now, it talks about now, he instructed the death angels coming through the land, the plagues have all taken place, there's one final left, finally he said, I'm going to come through the land, and in the land of Egypt, when they were living in bondage, and he said, now, I'm going to come through that land, the death angel will come through, is going to kill all the firstborn. But he said, now, to everyone... That kills that little perfect lamb and puts it on the side post and over the doorpost. When that death angel comes through that night, be sure that blood's covered. And when I see it, the angel sees it, he can't go in. Everyone in that house is saved. Yeah. And that happened for 1,600 years that they would have Passover in Jerusalem. They would come from all over the Roman Empire, and I'm having to hurry to say this, all over the Roman Empire and celebrate coming out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. 
And Passover meant just what happened 1,600 years prior. Yeah. And on an annual basis, they would come a million strong, many, uh, many would say, at least that many from all over the Roman Empire. They would gather in Jerusalem and pack it. Mm. And the head of each household would carry that little lamb, mm. little perfect lamb, hand it to the high priest. The throat would be cut, and you know the rest of the story, and he would shed it. And that would be covering for that next year. Mm. But on that 1,600 year, there was another drama taking place in that same city at that same time, and it was another lamb. It's the lamb John spoke of mm -hmm. when he saw him. Mm -hmm. Behold the lamb of God. Mm -hmm. He's standing before Pilate. It won't be long till they're beating him. It won't be long till there's a cross on his back. It won't be long till he's carrying it up Golgotha. Mm -hmm. And when he hung up there, he drew that last breath. His blood was flowing from his body. Mm -hmm. The perfect holy lamb of God that was slain on the 1600 year of Passover. No more would it be required that a little animal, mm. not the blood of goats, mm. lambs, etc., mm. is required anymore. But it is, Scripture says, once and once for all. <laughs> I'm, I don't look like I'm shouting, but I'm, I'm off the floor talking. Well, 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 the, dry, the, the way I was reading it, he kept saying once, 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 one sacrifice, once. And I kept reading that while I was sitting there studying it. The Lord said, whenever the devil gives you a hard time, you tell him a bedtime once. story and say, once upon a time, once. God was manifest Woo. in the flesh. Ah, Jesus died hallelujah. on the cross, arose from the dead ah. once upon a time, and tell the devil a bedtime story and rock him to sleep with the rock of salvation. Bam! Hit him in the head. <laughs> <laughs> once upon a time. <laughs> you and I would have a little too much fun <laughs> preaching on the same platform. Woo. The blood of Jesus. Dear Pastor, look right into that camera. And every man, woman, boy, and girl, if you have never in your life confessed your sins, that's what he said, dude. If you confess your sins, just confess them. All that means is, Lord, I'm sorry for all that I've done. Jesus said, if you will confess me, Matthew 10, 32 and 33, if you'll confess me before men, I'll confess you to the Father. Verse 33, if you deny me before men, I'll deny you to the Father. Mark 10, verse 9 says, if you confess with your mouth what you believe in your heart, that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Then the next line, if you've ever wanted your name in the Bible, here it is. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yeah, so whosoever Thompson heard it. Yeah. Whosoever Hankins heard yeah. it, whosoever Dale Way hanging yeah. heard it, and whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now let me let me uh, let you understand this. He's done all he's going to do about your salvation. He's not coming back. He's not going to kill him again. He's not sending his son back a second time. Next time you see the son, he's not coming back on the back of a donkey into the, the city of Jerusalem. They're not going to jerk him off that donkey. They're not going to put him before Pilate. They're not going to crucify him. Not this time. Next time he comes back, the skies are going to split. He's going to come back as the immaculate king of kings and the Lord of Lords. But if you want to reign with Him, this isn't one of many ways. This is the only way. Jesus said, John 14, 6, I am the way, truth, and life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So while Pastor Hankins leads you in that prayer, there's one way to Jesus. Say, Father, I want you to forgive me. I receive Christ as my Savior and Lord. Cover me with your precious blood. Pastor, say whatever you want to say. Lead folks to Jesus Christ. Right now, the blood of Jesus is applied simply by faith. Faith in his blood. That God loves you. Even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. His blood is liquid love that flows from the heart of God and gives us hope and heals our wounded and broken lives wherever you've been damaged or hurt or broken right now if you'll just look to the cross look to jesus look to his blood and apply that blood by faith would you just say this with me right now and just make this confession say dear god 
I come to you now. Dear God, I come to you now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I believe you love me. I believe that you love me. I believe. I believe in the blood of Jesus. In the blood of Jesus. On the cross. On the cross. And his blood was shed. And his blood he shed. And he took it to heaven. And he took it to heaven. And he purchased my redemption. And he purchased my redemption. Eternal. Eternal. I'm free. I'm free. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I apply it to my heart. Apply it to my heart. Apply it to my life. I apply it to my life. To my past. To my past. And to my future. To my future. And the blood of Jesus. And the blood of Jesus. Gives me victory. Gives me victory. In every area. In every area. I have confidence. I have confidence. In the blood of Jesus. In the blood of Jesus. And I confess with my mouth. I confess with my mouth. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. My sins are washed away. My sins are washed away. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. And now. And now I can fellowship with God. I can fellowship with God as my very own father. As my very own father. Without guilt. Without guilt. Without shame. Without shame. I cry, Abba Father. I cry, Abba Father. Daddy God. Daddy God. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. I know I'm saved. I know I'm saved. And I am forgiven. I am forgiven. And right now. Right now. I am free. I am free. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, and let the church rejoice. Amen, amen, and amen. Didn't you enjoy that incredible word from this great man of God, Dr. Mark Hankins? Didn't you enjoy it so much? Thank him for being here tonight. Pastor, thank you. It's hard not to call you pastor. I've done it for so many years. Thank you for being here. I know you're busy, and we're so grateful. You brought us a great word tonight. Thank God for the we blood of Jesus. From our heart. Thank you. This precious Dale Wade, this great man of God, I wish you knew that how what a great preacher and minister he is and pastor. We know him mostly as one of the most gifted songwriters and singers, but he's one of the great pastors in our nation. The Lord gave him a song, and he's going to sing it before I give you a few words that they've asked me to share tonight about my own father, the time that we'll have remaining. The title of his song, it's a personal experience, is simply called Dad Daddy. Give Pastor Dale Way a big hand. God bless you. Sunday morning was the same old tune. Mom and boy get dressed up and go to church till noon. And every time the daddy would make an excuse to stay. But before he'd go out of the door, his little boy would say, Daddy, won't you come to church with me today? Promise I'll be good and do everything you say. Jesus loves everybody, I heard the preacher say. So, Daddy, won't you please come to church with me today? It was Saturday afternoon before the sun went down. The mom and boy had some errands to run on the other side of town The sun was low and shining bright, she didn't see The car that swerved into her lane coming down the street and When the daddy heard his boy had died, he sat alone and cried Wishing he could hear the words he heard so many times Daddy, won't you come to church with me today? I promise I'll be good and do everything you say. Jesus loves everybody, I heard the preacher say. So Daddy, won't you please come to church with me today?
Won't you come to church with me today? I promise I'll be good, do everything you say. Jesus loves everybody, I heard the preacher say. So daddy, won't you please come to church with me today? Daddy, won't you please come to church with me today? Hallelujah. Give Dale Way a big hand. Thank him for this wonderful music tonight. You know, Pastor Dale, it might possibly that song you sang just before this one on the cross, that uh, if you'd maybe have them cue that up just in case I can get finished with this in time, and we might, uh, we might have a little bit of that as we go off of the air tonight. Dan Crouch had asked that we would talk tonight, if we could, about our fathers. So I laid aside what I had come with tonight. I just want to tell you tonight a story, if I may do that. I grew up in the home of uh, two of the most wonderful parents that you could have, and I was blessed in that respect. My father and my mother pastored and preached, I should say, for about 65 years. 1990, they both went home to be with the Lord, one in the month of May and the other three months later. My mother passed away first, my father passed away second. I preached both of their funerals uh, within that three, three and a half month period. I think the most outstanding thing I've talked about my mother, I want to talk about my father for a few minutes tonight because for this reason. I believe, fathers, if you've ever listened to me, listen to me tonight. I believe that one of the final roadblocks of the number of roadblocks that are placed in the pathway of any of us going into eternity without God, one of those pathways has to be a praying mother. Or a praying father. We know it's Jesus. We know it's the blood. We know it's the Holy Spirit. We know it's the precious God. We know it's Christian influence. But I said to Brother Mark Hankings, I said, I truly believe that I would be in eternity tonight without God had it not been for my father and from my mother. So being raised in that Pentecostal church, one day at about 16 years of age, it was summertime, and I had, uh, I had worked most all of that summer, and I had saved up a little bit of money, and I had a 1950 Ford. So I decided that now I've got about several weeks before school starts up again, so I'm just going to go off and live my life and do what I want to do. And I told my father, I said, and I, told, and I meant this, because I love them. I didn't have many things that I could boast about as a young man that I could take pride in in my behavior, but the one thing that I can say that I believe I was consistent with I adored my mother and father, and I never was guilty. I don't believe in my lifetime of calling them my old man or my old lady when it seemed like a lot of the kids were doing it in those years because it just, it just didn't work for me. They were just two of the most wonderful people in this world. But I did tell them this. I said, I'm not mad at you. I'm, uh, I'm not angry, but I just want to go and live my life and do what I want to do. And I can still see them both standing out close to that little 1954 that I have, and I can, I can see my father walk up to me and say to me these words, and he had some money rolled up in his hand, and he handed it to me, and he took this money, he handed it to me, and he said, now, you keep this money, and there's some change here. And he said, son, no matter how far you go and whatever you do, if you need me, 
you call collect, and I'll come get you. He didn't say, I'm, I'm ashamed of you. He didn't say, I'm not proud of you anymore. He didn't say any of those things. He just said that. Then my little mother stepped up, and she said these words. She said, now, son, you get in your little blue car. She didn't know to call it a 1950 Ford. It had big white sidewall tires on it. She said, now, you get in your little blue car with those white tires on it, and you go as far as you want to go. But you will never go so far that my prayers are not going to find you. How many know what it is to have a praying mom or dad? So I got in that car and away I went. And I went away to another city. And I found me a little motel and I stayed there and I made some friends. And I began to hang out in places that I shouldn't hang out. And this went on for a period of time, and I wanted to taste this, and I wanted to taste that. But I began to realize very quickly, none of this is what it's cracked up to be. How many found that out somewhere uh, along the way? Well, several weeks went by. Several weeks went by, and I remember vividly thinking about, I wonder how things are going back at the Father's house. How they're doing. But now I had made friends, and I, this is a lifestyle that I wanted, and I was tasting a little bit of beer and smoking a little cigarette, and I thought, well, there's got to be more to sin than this, and I started hanging out, and I met some friends at a little, in those days, they didn't call them, I don't think, nightclubs or anything, this little old joint that they had where they played some music, and I made some buddies down there, and we hung out, and I thought, well, this is cool, but I found out it wasn't very cool. And the thing about the enemy, he always wants to paint a great picture and say, uh, come on out here. No wonder scripture says that one road, it's wide and many there's going to be that find it, but the other road, it's narrow. Few there be that find it. But then he goes back and he says, those that travel this road where the opening and the path is wide, the end thereof is death. But this narrow road, it's narrow, only one way, Jesus Christ. And through that door, the end that travel that road, the end of that life, is life eternal with Jesus Christ. And it's a choice you make. And suddenly I realize this isn't what it's cracked up to be. And I understood one thing vividly, even as a 16-year-old. There is some component that God puts in the soul of a man that nothing that can enter into that soul except he and he alone can satisfy that soul. Drugs won't do it. Alcohol can't do it. Stuff can't do it. Things can't do it. Friendships can't do it. All of these things that are promoted by the world can't do it. Even the Old Testament prophet Isaiah in 55 would say to those that were now living in Babylonian captivity, he would say to them, Ho, oh, everyone that thirsts, come ye to the waters and drink. You're laboring for that which does not satisfy it, and you're seeking after that which doesn't bring joy, he reiterated. That won't do it. Jesus said to the woman at the well, you can drink from this well and drink and drink and drink, but you will thirst again. But the water that I give you shall be in you. A well of living water springing up unto life everlasting. In other words, he is saying the soul can only be satisfied by the creator. And the soul of man created by God, it was he and he alone that breathed into man a living soul. And the only way that man can find everlasting life, he has to wing his way back to the creator 
So everything else is futile. It's, it's hopeless. It's a cul-de-sac. It's a dead-end street. You can search, but you will never find. And one day I came home, came back to that little motel, I should say, and there was a note on the door. And the note on the door said this. It said, son, I'm in room so-and-so, and when you get in, call me. The first thing in my mind as my blood seemed to run cold in my veins, I thought, well, how in the world did he find me? And the next thing went into my mind was, I'm not going to let him come in here and tell me what to do. I'm a man now. I shaved twice this month. I'm going to tell him what to do. So I dialed that phone and told him, Dad, I'm, uh, what are you doing here? I'm, I'm back in the room. And that was like about 1 in the morning, 2, whatever it was. And so a lock came on the door in a few moments, and I opened that door. And my, my father's about 5 foot 10. He comes to about like, about, about like this on me. And he, he just, when I opened that door, I was prepared for him. I didn't hide my booze I had sitting there. I didn't hide my cigarettes. I thought, I'm going to. Tell him I'm a man now and I'm going to do what I want to do. Kind of silly when you think about it now, isn't it? So I opened that door, and when I opened the door, he just came walking in real fast. He just sort of went by me. And he went straight to that table for some reason where I had that stuff sitting there. And he looked at that those cigarettes, and he kind of pointed at them like this, and he said, I, I, I was never a camel man. I, I smoked at Lucky Strikes. That's all he said. And he pointed at that bottle of beer. I don't remember what it was, to be quite frank. He said, uh, well, I, I never tried that beer, son, when I was a boy, but I, I tried whatever, whatever thing he said. And he just sort of talked like that. And in my mind, what I'm remembering, I'm thinking, well, what is he doing? What is, you know, I didn't know to use the phrase we use today. He's messing with my mind. He's playing some kind of psychological game with me. None of that came to my mind, but it did confuse me because I was expecting him to come in and say something to the effect like, uh, Son, you're just killing me. You're putting me in an early grave. Anybody ever hear that? And anybody ever say that? But in a few moments, it just seemed like he just got right in my face. And he had this real gentle look in his eye and he has big hands, much bigger than mine, and he's a man's man, my father is, and I can still feel that big hand on the side of my face, and he patted it like this, and he said these words, how's my boy? I've missed my son. I've missed him. And he looked at me and said these words. He said, son, whatever it is, you and I and God, we can solve this. And I'm here to stay with you until we get it all worked out. And then that got my attention. I said, well, well Dad, don't you have to get back to the church? He said, no, I'm, I'm not worried about the church. Well, what, what do you think people might say? I, I'm not concerned about what people might say. I love my church. I love my people. But right now, that's not my number one priority. And I said, well, 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 well how did you find me? And he said, well, you, you know your mother. He said, your mother two nights ago prayed all night long. And she got up the next morning and handed me a note. And I said, what is this? And she said, uh, I don't know. This is the town Dwight is in, and this is what the Holy Ghost gave me, and this is the place he is staying, that motel, and this is his room number. Which tells me God tells these mothers everything. You might as well give it up. He tells mothers everything. And I said, well, uh, Dad, don't you need to get back and preach Sunday? He said, and she also gave me one more instruction. She said, don't come home without my son. And that's what God did. God sent his son and said, I want what I lost. I want it back. Oh, hallelujah. 
I feel like shouting here just a little bit tonight. And I look into this camera tonight and I think about this. I think about, I think about everyone tonight that's under the sound of my voice watching across America and other parts of the world. I want you to hear me. Nobody but nobody has to go into eternity without God. Think about that. Because the provision of the shed blood of Jesus is still in effect in 2008. And his blood has never lost its power. Well, I thought I'd test my dad. I said, well, dad, I'm not ready to go home yet. He said, that's all right. He said, I'll just hang around in my room. And, and I said, well, as a matter of fact, I said tonight, and this was like early morning. I said, now tonight I've got plans. I'm going to meet my friends down here at this, uh, this nightclub, this uh, place. He said, well, son, if it's all right with you, I'll just go with you. I said, you'll do what? I, I said, I'll go with you. Now, I can't go in there. You understand? I'm not going to go in, but I'll just wait for you at the door. And it's all right with you. I'll just pray while you're in there. I said, you mean, you mean you're going to, you're going to go with me to where I'm going? I, I'll just go with you. And he went with me. And I kept trying to test him and see if he, if he, if he really meant it. I went to this little old place. I can still remember that gravel parking lot, just a little dive joint. I just had some buddies in there trying to pretend like I was enjoying that bottle of beer. And I went in there, and my father got out of the car, and he went and just stood by the side of the door. And I said, what are you going to do? He said, I'm just going to pray. Well, do you know when you get inside how hard it is to have a good time? <laughs> when, you're, when your father's outside praying. And he not only prayed in a known tongue, he began to pray in the precious tongue of the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, it caused a little commotion. And pretty soon somebody came in and I saw something going on and they said, there's somebody speaking a foreign language outside. He's some kind of foreigner. And I finally went outside knowing what this was all about, and there stood my dad. And he was talking to two or three people and telling them about Jesus Christ. And he had been praying in the Spirit. And I just looked at him, and he just looked up at me and smiled. And he said it again, I love my son. And I remember how that melted my spirit. And I gave it up, and I said, Dad, let's go home. We got in that car, and that afternoon, we got back to Fort Worth, Texas, pulled up in that driveway, and he pulled up first in his car, and I pulled up in mine. And when I pulled up in my car, my mother was waiting beside that big oak tree beside the driveway. And she was laughing. She had her little hand over her mouth like this. She's just been over, and she was just laughing. When I got close to her, she did her little finger like this, and she said, I told you, I told you, you will never go so far that my prayers are not going to find you. Hallelujah. Now listen to me closely, fathers. I'm here tonight because... I not only knew about the love of my heavenly father as my father preached it, but I actually saw that love modeled in the life of my own father. He never once said that he was ashamed of me. He never once put me under condemnation. He never once said I'm no good. He never once said, I'm not going to turn out worth anything. He never once said, I'm an embarrassment to him, to the church. He never once put me under any of that kind of condemnation. All he ever told me was that he loved me. And I remember, remember vividly this in my spirit. If this is what the... Heavenly Father is truly like my earthly Father. And if this is representative in my Father's life of what the Heavenly Father is like, then I'm going to serve my Heavenly Father for the rest of my life. And though I've hit bumps and roads and 
mistakes and failures and along the way I never lost sight of one thing and that God loves me so much that he gave his most priceless possession Jesus Christ that I don't have to go to hell but I can go to heaven the love of my heavenly father reflected in the love of my earthly father conveyed to this lost son I gave my heart and my life to Jesus Christ and I want to say to every father that's watching here tonight tell your son you love him tell your daughter you love them and let them know no matter what I love you it doesn't mean when the Holy Spirit speaks and says to you as he did to Narvel Hayes that time when his daughter was lost he said two things number one he said Narvel your daughter may be on drugs and she may be on alcohol for this period in her life but there's one thing you're to do you're to love her unconditionally and the second thing you're to do you're to turn her over to me and Narvel Hayes began to hear, see Zona in this way in his faith. He began to speak this over her. He began to say that my daughter is a disciple taught of God in obedience to the will of God. And great shall be her peace. And great shall be her composure. And Narvel kept speaking over her these words. In other words, he wasn't seeing her as she was. He was seeing her as what God was about to make her into. And what I want to say to every father, begin to speak life into a lost child. Don't see them as you see them permanently, but see them as God sees them. God didn't see me then in the condition that I was in as a permanent place, but he did see that little piece of clay called Dwight Thompson that I see him not what he is but I see him what he's going to be so in Jesus name tonight I want to pray this prayer if you don't know Christ as your Savior pray this prayer with me out loud all over this place and all over America and around the world repeat after me Lord Jesus I come to you a sinner I ask you to come into my heart. I repent of every sin. And I believe the shed blood of Jesus washes my sins away. And with your help and grace, I will serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Now I want to say to you right now, it's Brother Del Way just prepares to sing whatever portion of this song he can sing during this small time frame. That'll be wonderful. And if they'll go ahead and begin to just play it. But I just want to say this. Fathers, in Jesus' name, I want you just right now to say this with me. In Jesus' name. Fathers, repeat this. In Jesus' name, I pledge before God to serve him with my whole heart and to be a leader and a priest in my home I was lost and I will love my children but unconditionally until they come to God where to find me in Jesus name amen get your head up was hungry get your faith working because you dad love them love them unconditionally oh, and I'm believing tonight every member of your family is coming to God listen to Dale sing Calvary and you gave is the reason why living water you were my shelter when I had no place to go that's why sometimes I just want to praise you and you worship him tonight and give him glory. Oh, and sometimes just to speak your name, Jesus. Yeah, sometimes I just 
I want to thank you <laughs> Without asking you for a thing Oh, sometimes I lift my hands to Then sometimes all I do is cry Everything that I have I owe to you Lord and Calvary's the reason why Yes it is When I think of the love that you've given. Lord, when I think of the price you paid for me. Then all the trials on earth, they seem like nothing. When they're compared to dark Calvary, lift your hands all across America and sing it with this. That's why God. sometimes I, I just, just want to praise you. Yes, I do. Oh, sometimes just to speak your name. Sometimes I just want to thank you. Hallelujah. Without asking you for a thing. This program has been brought to you through the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout North America and the world. What happened to the disciples who walked with Jesus? And where did they go after Christ's resurrection and ascension? For your gift this month, TBN would like to send you the book, The Search for the Twelve Apostles, by Dr. William Stewart McBurney. Based on known church documents, as well as early historical and archaeological remains, Dr. McBurney has traveled the world to find the links between church relics, archaeology, legends, and biblical accounts. The search for the Twelve Apostles picks up where the Book of Acts leaves off. This amazing book is an intriguing read for anyone interested in Christianity and its life-changing impact on the world. To receive the search for the 12 apostles, send your gift to TBN, PO Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711, or give online at tbn.org. Hi, I'm Karen Kingsbury, and I write life-changing fiction. And I just wanted to say happy Father's Day to all of you dads out there who are watching, and to all of you families out there who are getting ready to celebrate Father's Day. It's really a big day, and uh, for me, it's a very tender-hearted day. This last year, uh, my dad passed away, and I had the privilege of, of just having an amazing relationship with my dad. Uh, he encouraged me and built me up and believed in my dreams, my dreams to be a writer. And I'd bring him something that I had written, and I would say, you know, Dad, what do you think? And my dad would read it, and he would say, Karen, one day, everyone is going to read what you write, and they're going to know what an amazing writer you are and you know I look at, at my dad and the way he loved me and I just want to encourage you dads out there what a difference it makes in the lives of your kids that you know someday when I die I don't want people to say wow Karen you know Karen Kingsbury what an amazing writer I want them to say you know Karen she was a lot like her dad my name is Wade Goodall and I hope that you go to church on Father's Day this is a day where you can be an example to your children, even though they might not be saved, you can set the pace for them on what it is like to be a Christ follower. God bless you for watching TVN. Hello, I'm Tony Evans, and I want to wish all the fathers out there 
a very happy and blessed Father's Day as you love your children and love your family and show how the Heavenly Father feels about us by how you demonstrate how you feel about your children. Happy Father's Day from the Trinity Broadcasting Network. The production and airtime of the following program is made possible by you, the TBN Partners, and is only here because of your generous support. Next on Life Focus.